Hello guys and welcome back. It's David here. I am at Casino Quest on one of our fantastic tables and we are going to have a quickie class on not quickies, but the prop box. So the prop box is an area of huge concern. Uh, a lot of dealers, when they see this, this is where they get confused, they get intimidated, and I can't tell you how many times I've walked down that hole uh, on the way to uh, deal, and I have new dealers coming up to me, you know, trying to you know remind themselves what the keys are. They get very nervous when dealing with the prop. Starting on base is, is easy. It's the prop box that'll get you and working the stick. Because when you're on the stick, you gotta own the table, you gotta have some presence, you gotta collect and manage these bets well. The table is counting on you. You also have to be able to speak. And in this case, many people, I find it a bit odd, but you know, even people who get a little nervous in crowds or don't like speaking, being on the stick on a dice table is a whole different dynamic. You're there with some other people. People are very close by. It's nothing like speaking in public. It's much more relaxed, much more accommodating. So anybody out there who feels like this is the takeaway, don't think of it as that because it's, it's very easy to get in on the stick. Even the most, the quietest, softest people uh, that I've known have done fantastic jobs of the stick. So it's, it's definitely an area that you can conquer. You just need to apply yourself. Okay, so what I'm gonna go over today is just a few basic things where I'm not even going to really kind of handle the stick. Here's the stick here, all right? Uh, we're gonna get to a stick class, an actual using the stick. Believe it or not, moving the dice along the table is not as easy as it looks. It's very difficult, especially when you consider you're using a small stick and then ultimately two small dice or five dice and how to work these dice on the game, it's not that easy. Uh, of course, the dice themselves, most of the dice now are 19 millimeter. Well, again, we'll, we'll go over that more in detail in another class. Uh, they're acrylic, they have sharp corners, they always they feature the logo of the casino and they're also, I don't know if you can see that, you probably can't see that, they're also serialized, they come with a number and as a stick person, you are responsible for knowing the number on the dice and you know holding the dice accountable. We're gonna go over that. We're gonna have another class called Stick Rules and Shooter Rules, but today we are going to literally get down to basics on the prop box. So we're not gonna go over all the keys necessarily. There's many, many videos out on the keys. What we're gonna talk about are some basic dynamics here and I'm gonna use my hands to talk a little bit so you know that there's actually someone here. When you're on the stick, okay, as a stick, you'll see the stick person. And by the way, uh, before I go on, I should say that A, if you would like to be a dealer yourself, uh, we definitely have an academy. Casino Quest Academy is at cqdealers.com, cqdealer or cqdealers.com. And many of the things that you see here, uh, a layout, the, you know, uh, many of the items, the dice, these kinds of things, you can find on shopcasinoquest.com, shopcasinoquest.com, or you can go to casinoquest.biz and you can hit uh, the shop link. But again, if you would like to go through a more formal course, we have Blackjack Roulette and Bach. Those are on cqdealers.com. And for those of you who are looking to become dealers, uh, we give you a $50 credit for having gone through uh, one or all the courses on CQ Dealers or the Casino Quest Academy, okay? If you come down to CG Dealer School, tell, let them know that you went through the uh, C Casino Quest Academy and you will get $50 a credit towards any course or package of courses there. Okay, back to the class. All right, so uh, I'm gonna have the checks up here as you can see. Normally the checks would be uh, at the bottom where you see that any craps is but I'm gonna have the checks up here to kind of demonstrate and talk through the prop box. So here's what goes on. As you're the stick person, you manage all these center action bets, prop bets, stick bets, whatever you wanna call them, hopping bets, turn bets, and we're gonna go over some of the terminology. The players on either side will throw their money into the middle and tell you what they want. Now, back in the day, and I mean like uh, formally speaking, every bet needs to be booked by two people on the table. Two people, including the stick person and the base person from where the bet came. So if the bet came from second base, which is over here, that base dealer would say, 
$5, for example, if the person threw in a $5 C&E, they would say $5 C&E and the position. So every bet has to be accompanied with the bet, the amount, and the location of the player, okay? The bet, the amount, and the location of the player. Those three things have to accompany every single bet that comes in. Otherwise, you don't know what to book, you see? So as a player, for example, we like our players to enunciate clearly what they want. $5 C&E. Now, it's up to the base person or the stick person to tell the position. We don't expect the players to know what position they are in, but if they do, hey, I, I, I will actually throw in money and say, hey, $5 CD down the center, uh, and lets everybody know like who's making the bet and what I want, right? Now, different casinos have different types of ideology when it comes to how the bets are set up, and for that I mean, if you're the stick person, you're primarily, you're responsible for setting these bets up. There are some casinos that will allow the base dealer to provide some level of assistance in setting up the bets. When I worked at the Rio, I would set up many of my own C&Es or hard ways. Just I would reach right in and help my stick person out. A lot of places do not like the base dealers to reach their hands into the proposition area. And at those casinos, of course, it's up to the stick person. So if you're on base, you're just gonna lay this bets right here. So if you're a base dealer and you have bets coming in, they're gonna be thrown in, you collect them, set them here in order, uh, in the order that you got them, and then that way you can relay them to the stick person, okay? Or just let the stick person collect them and set them up themselves, all right? So as a stick person, it's important again to book these bets, okay? So the base dealer books the bets, the stick person books the bets, it's the amount, the position and the bet, or the amount, the bet, and the position of the player. Those three things have to accompany every single bet. Okay, now when it comes to setting up the player or what position they are, that's how you're able to keep track of who made what bet. If someone threw in a hard eight and they were right next to the stick person, that's position one, you can put the money right here, $5 hard eight next to stick or position one. Okay, so think about these divots. Now this, this layout has divots all the way around. It's not all tables will have these divots. Uh, but here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now interestingly, the C and E on this table has seven. You'll find that in a lot of dice games, there might only be seven CDs on the table. Some now have eight, but realistically, we're only gonna get six or seven people on a side. When you set up the CNEs, again, you set it up where the arrow is pointing to the person. So this might be a CNE at position seven or eight. This is a position at five and six and so forth and so on. And you set them up that way. Now, what I tell my students, I like to set up stacks. I don't split bets. On a split bet, if I can set up the stack and put it in the middle, I set up the stack and put it in the middle and I do that because it's harder for this stack to be set ajar. So for example, if I set it up like this, C and E, and I get other people throwing bets in, now I've got a C and E that's underneath another stack, and I'm a little confused. Now you can say, well, what happens if they land like this, and that confused the stack? Well, that doesn't happen quite as often. So I like to keep the stacks just like this, and then someone presses them, it's easy to press. Now, obviously, if the bet is uneven, I have to separate it. So if they have a $3 C, $2 E, I would need to, to, to split it up. Okay, so let's go over some of the different bets, of course, and move on from there. So, of course, everything on a dice game, any hopping bet or any bet on the next roll of the dice, any combination of the dice can be bet on the hop or the turn. So both of those... Uh, terminologies can be used interchangeably. It's either on the hop or hop bets or on the turn. So any combination of the dice can be bet. Now the ones that you see in red at the bottom are there because those are the most popular bets. But any combination, if you want to bet the 4-1, the 3-2, 3-3, anything hopping, okay? And you see here a lot of casinos now have this hop, bot, hop bets box with all the different combinations laid out for the 7 so that everything can be clear and the camera can clearly see, or surveillance can clearly see what's being bet. In the past, there would just, the boxman would take the bet, put their finger on it, and go bet, 
and uh, let's say you wanted 5-3 hop and it's a 5-3 bet and put it in the middle of the table, there was no box to clearly sort of uh, designate that bet and some people ended up taking advantage of that. But here we have most tables nowadays have a hop box and it has all the different combinations on the dice. Now you notice that there's a hard ways here, hard six, hard four, hard eight, and hard 10. These are on the hop on the very next roll of the dice, okay? Whereas the all day hard ways in here, a little different, are played out a little different. Now let's keep in mind, there are only really two different ways that dice can be rolled, easy or hard, okay? An easy way is just a non-double a 6-5, a 3-2, a 4-2, anything that is not a double. Anything that is a double is a hard way. So you know like when you're playing Monopoly or Life and you get pairs or doubles like a 2-2, two, two, a 4-4, four, four, that is a hard way on the hop. So any dice, right, any two dice on the game can only be thrown easy way, not a double, or hard way, a double, okay? Now, this is where different casinos deal with it differently. If you are downtown or in a competitive market, you'll notice that easy ways are going to pay 16 for one, okay? Right here, 16 for one. Whereas the hard ways are going to pay 31 for one. We call this downtown odds here in Vegas because many downtown casinos have these odds. If you look over here, you'll see 16 for one on the 12 uh, because the layout company who we used to make this apparently lost their minds and forgot what 12s pay on the hop. And uh, we no longer work with them because there's that, all right? But anyways, here's the easy way is a 6-5 and a hard way hopping is a 31 for one. Now, is this any hard way hopping? Just because it's on the aces doesn't mean it's just the aces. It's all hard ways hopping. So if you scroll up here, you have a hard eight, 31 for one, hard 10, 31 for one, and so forth and so on, because guess what? There's only one way to roll aces, an ace and an ace. On the 11, an easy way, there are two ways to roll this specific combination, right? On the hop, six, five, or five, six, when it comes to the dice. And now that's a good distinction to, to understand as well. So let's put some dice out here. Okay, so here's a hard eight. So when we talk about ways on the dice, we use this term a little loosey-goosey on the dice game. The first thing to understand, of course, is there are six ways to make a seven, right? Six different ways to make a seven. There are five ways to make a six or an eight. There are four ways to make a five or a nine. And there are three ways to make a four or and a 10. And I'm pointing here and here. Uh, and just ignore where this is going because it's nothing to do with the actual boxes. Okay, now how do we know that? Because there are 36 total ways to roll the dice.